Hey, John. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Welcome back to UC. Glad to be here. All right, we picked a beautiful day to be back. He's UC. A combine uh, freak too. <laughs> Morris Harvey, this is the best story, I think, of these guys. I'm told that the Falcon staff loved the meeting with the kid, loved the prospect, and he's going to be an NFL player. First time from that school, 76 years. Leaves college 285 pounds. I'm told. So thinking back of what, it's a half a dozen years now to uh, when you were in high school and thinking about where you're going to go to college, why did you decide to attend UC and uh, did your experience here meet your expectations? Out of high school I really wanted a football scholarship mm -hmm. and so this school was actually the only school to offer me scholarship dollars and so it was a no-brainer for me. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, and it exceeded every bit of my expectations. I didn't know what to expect. I just know that I was excited to play college football. And so the football program and the coaches and the players was much more, well, much more than I expected. And all even in the classroom too. I mean, the professors. I, I have things in my mind that are still instilled in my mind. I haven't even used my brain in about two years, my science brain, mm -hmm. and those things are still in my mind. So you were no slouch in the classroom. I've, I've always been been a hard worker, but I just I developed this competitive nature about me in the classroom. I always wanted to to do the best I could on all the tests. But I did graduate with a 3.9 GPA wow. in chemistry and biology, dual major. I had a lot of great teachers, Sarah Fenn, Haas, and Son, Watson. I, they've kind of followed me the whole way, so I, I, I was able to develop relationships with them. And they introduced me to a lot of different job fields, you know, just getting your PhD in chemistry and where that could take you, or just being a medical doctor. And so they kind of opened the doorway for all kinds of different options. And But as soon as the NFL rolled around my junior year, I kind of started putting those, those thoughts to the wayside just for a little bit. Uh, that journey is pretty uncommon. Uh, for an athlete coming out of a NCAA Division II program like UC's. So how did you prepare for scouting visits, uh, being invited to the NFL Combine, and ultimately uh, to your first uh, NFL training camp with the Falcons? Like I said, I knew how to work hard, but once, once the NFL came around, once I signed with my agent and I got introduced to some former NFL uh, coaches, former NFL players, current players, it was basically they helped to direct that hard work and so I was becoming more efficient in what I was doing and as far as like the mental preparation uh, the, the interview process especially getting right into the NFL is is pretty it's pretty unique uh, the things they would make you do and so I just started I just really just conversations with those former players and those former coaches that really um, started my thinking and started my preparation mentally and then physically like I said you know they were just guiding what I need to work on what the kind of things that I need to focus on in order to be ready to play NFL football. And as part of the um, run up to the draft um, did you take the what's called the Wonderlick test? I did. Yeah and how was that? that? That was crazy I mean it's all kinds of those questions like you know, you got so many apples in your grocery bag and then this happens, this happens, how many apples you got left. So it was all, all kinds of questions like that, just kind of mind boggling questions. And you get, you're on a time, you're on a time restraint and everything's moving very quickly and you have 60 questions. And so you're trying to get as many as you can, can get done in 12 minutes. And it's, a, it's definitely a mental strain. If they'd only asked you about carbon change, you would have like scored 100%. That's what I'm saying, yep. <laughs> so uh, now we're fast forwarding a couple years and you're getting ready for your third NFL season. Uh, so what's different for you uh, mentally and physically compared to this time in 2019? Yeah, I would, I'd compare it to my experience at, at, uh, at Charleston as just, just being around in the experience of being in a football program or being in a certain environment you know, I'm going into my third year. I'd, I'd say it's equivalent to about how I was feeling going into my junior season at Charleston. You're starting to figure things out. Things are starting to become comfortable. You're starting to figure out exactly who you are as a player, what you need to work on. And so most of it's mental. It's just that confidence boost. And then the physical stuff is just, you know, I'm not so much, you know, banging as much weight as I can in the weight room. Now I'm more worked on 
flexibility and, and functional training versus how I was training in college, which was just eating as much as I could and lifting as much as I could. So it's a much more precise and efficient process now going into year three. Gotcha. Now you're playing for the Atlanta Falcons and well, it, it, it's your job, it, it's your livelihood. So is football still as fun for you as it used to be? Uh, what do you do to try to stay kind of passionate about the game? Sundays definitely make it worth it. You know, week one, two, three, you get to 12, 13, 14, you're doing the same thing. You're coming in, you're introduced to a team, it starts to become monotonous and you're, you know, you're kind of, you feel like you're going through the motions a little bit. But once you get to Sunday, it's just football again. It's just the way, same way you felt when you were a little kid, same way through high school and college. Now I'm on a big screen, I'm, I'm playing professional football, I got all my family and, and friends watching, so. Um, I'd say it's even been more exciting now that I'm in the NFL. And then just to stay passionate, you know, I just I just focus on uh, why I'm doing it. I think I think about my family and all the people that are cheering me on, and just that alone is enough to keep me going. Tell us what a kind of typical day is like for you. Everything that you would think would be on an extreme, extreme strict diet is about what I'm on. I'm I'm eating as clean as I can. You know, for carbs, it's oats and white rices. It's no longer pizza and fast food. You know, before I was just counting calories and now it's a little bit more precise. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about macros and I'm thinking about whole grains and, and it's just a little bit deeper of a level as far as nutrition. So I eat boring, healthy stuff for the most part. And then as far as the training regimen, you know, I get up and I eat my healthy breakfast and then go do my workout eat a good lunch and then I usually will go go out on the field so I'll do my weight room stuff in the morning and then get another meal and then I'll get on the field and work specific defensive line uh, movements on the field you know your sprints and and you know you're working your pass rush moves and things like that and then the rest of the day is rest and uh, I, I give myself a little bit more freedom towards dinner time as far as as far as what I'm eating but the earlier in the day I definitely try to eat a very clean breakfast and a lunch. So anything uh, kind of funny anecdote, something that happened to you like a, as a rookie or give us a little bit of uh, insight into uh, what it's like to be on an NFL team like the Falcons. That rookie year was rough. You know, I, you know, I was scared of the NFL in general, but the veterans usually are, you know, they're trying, they're trying their best to pick on you and make you feel uncomfortable and, and scare you out of that locker room. So, uh, you, I, I actually got it, I got off a little bit easy, but a lot of those guys, you know, they're making them sing, they're making them dance, you know, they're making them wash their car, stuff like that. I, I fortunately had a great group. Uh, they all, all I was required to do was, you know, sing a song every now and then and uh, bring in, made sure that the snacks were full in the defensive line room, um, you know, or else. I don't know what the or else <laughs> was, but you just did it because you respect your veterans. So yeah. that first team meeting, you walk in there and all the veterans, they have their seats. You know, they're not assigned, but they got their seats. Julio Jones is going to sit where he's sitting. So mm -hmm. you got to kind of wait till they filter in. You know, I didn't wait. I didn't know how it worked. I kind of sat down and, you know, here, come, here comes the veteran. No, Brooke, you got to get up. That's my seat. That's my seat. So then you're sit, standing on the wall just kind of waiting around, <laughs> waiting for the seats to clear up. And then you, then I'm like looking around. I'm like, oh, I got to go sit between those two angry guys right there, you know, and they're picking on you and laughing at you and stuff. So uh, it was fun, though. We're honored to have you be our spring 21 spring 2021 commencement speaker. Um, what themes uh, are you planning to share with our most recent graduates who are uh, real, getting excited to go and make their marks in the world? Yeah, so I think, I think I'm much younger than the average commencement speaker and so, and so, you know, I, and a lot of those, a lot of the speakers will talk about what they've learned, you know, since, you know, whatever, since they've graduated college or in their adult life and so, you know, with the NFL, it's so fast moving. I feel that I've I have learned a lot of things in my two years, and so I'll do, I'm just going to talk about what I've learned most, and that's really just you know finding a purpose in what you're doing. Uh, you got to find a why. You have to find a purpose. You have to find a reason for what you're doing because that's what you're going to lean on when it gets real tough and you you just want to quit. You know. I'm thinking about my family. I'm, I'm thinking about the things I've been through and I'm thinking about the story I'm writing for myself. And so um, that's that's really gonna be the main focus of what I'll be talking about. Well, John, thanks so much. I'm yeah. glad you're able to join us for yeah. this session of uh, Discover UC and uh, glad you're able to spend some time on campus and uh, look forward to seeing you down the football field tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. John, right, thanks thank again. You.